Uh, my name is Kathleen Hernandez, and we're standing right on the steps in front of Mr. Fox's office. What happened today? Um, today we had a press conference and it started early in the morning. Um, it was to talk about the event that's happening on Thursday where Richard Spencer is going to come speak at UF. And um, it went well. We had great questions were asked. Uh, everybody was really strong. And then we marched here. We first tried to get in through the back doors and um, that was a failed attempt because they locked us out. I'm, guess I'm guessing they knew that we were coming. And then we came here and we stood out here for about an hour and a half um, protesting, asking for the president to come out. We were told that, that he's nowhere to be found in a building. <laughs> and uh, there's some people who are still standing and sitting up there. What did you expect to happen today? Um, today I was hoping and I was expecting it to be more like in Tallahassee. When you go and protest in Tallahassee, you are allowed inside of the, um, you know, the offices of the senators and everyone in the house. It's usually really easy access and if you have a large amount of people or a big group coming in, you are allowed access in just because it would look terrible on their part to not do that. That's just what democratic values are. Um, and I was expecting that to something like that to happen today where we were going to be able to actually have a face-to-face -face interaction with President Fox and where he would be able to see our faces, acknowledge who we are, and we would be able to at least voice our opinion and state that we would rather not have Richard Spencer come speak here. It's going to cost us all a lot of money. It's coming from taxpayer dollars, and it's just not right. And what, do you, what response would you like from the University of Florida administration? I would like the University of Florida to be transparent with what their intentions are because when you allow hate speech anywhere, um, especially in a public, um, public property, this is a land that belongs to all of us here, it belongs to the students. When you allow hate speech to happen, it will be something that will continuously pop up everywhere else. If we allow it in this university, where, when will it stop? And will it stop you know, down in Miami or will it extend to other universities around the globe? around the country. Um, in Boston, you know, there was a similar situation and the people rallied together. They were very strong and they were able to peacefully stop it. And I feel like that should be our role model for us. Uh, are you a student at UF? I'm not a student at UF. I'm a student with FIU. I'm uh, majoring in sustainability and the environment. And it's my senior year. So what brings you up here? I moved to Gainesville for the activism. I moved here because I see that this is a place full of life. It's full of people who actually want to do something and are you know active in the community sometimes it's hard to in florida especially it's hard to come together because we're so dispersed i also lived in orlando and it's hard because everything's 15 20 miles away from one another and here everything's so close so we have the ability to come together and we have we have everything around us in order to make a difference and all of the communities that neighbor with um, around the Gainesville area are also minority communities who are facing gentrification and all of these problems. So I'm, I'm definitely here to make a difference and help out however I can. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Kissimmee-ish. <laughs> I grew up in Kissimmee. Um, I lived in Peru for a few years, and um, but I, I was born here in the United States. How did you get involved in activism? I got involved uh, in activism when I was really young through recycling programs. Um, I petitioned for there to be recycling in the city of Kissimmee. And when that happened, I was like, wow, you know, if I can make recycling happen, you can make anything happen. So I was definitely very optimistic. And over the years, I've become more realistic and focusing on what can actually be achieved and uh, feasible answers and solutions. And I got more involved through the Sable Trail Pipeline protest. I was at the camps for the Sable Trail, against the Sable Trail Pipeline. Um, we were trying to stop that, and uh, I ended up locking down to a truck. And yeah, <laughs> I ended up locking down to a truck, and we were able to stop construction for 10 days through this one action. So, you know. So are you going to be in the protest on Thursday? I'm planning on being on the protest on Thursday um, if I'm needed elsewhere for other reasons. Um, I also am planning on being jail support, so with all the files and people of their names, hopefully nobody gets arrested, but if they do, we want to be able to get them out. Yeah, we want to be able to get them out. Um, what do you want the results from these actions today and on Thursday to be? Um, I want a concrete answer. I want something that's stated where it says this will never happen again. We will not allow this hate to come here ever again. Something where it will create a precedent. We we don't want to fight this today and in, on Thursday and then see it come up in 20 years. We want it to stop here. We want it to stop now. We want future generations to not have to deal with our problems. So if we can fix it today, I hope that you know we won't have to keep on doing these things in, in later years.
That's fantastic. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, no, but definitely people get active, do something about it. There's so much you can do, just speaking to your neighbors, getting involved with your local community, and finding out who is around you and how you can help them it makes a huge difference. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you.